Victory face. I'm David, and Sarah's behind the camera. Hi. I want to introduce our latest project. We've been working on this for about a year. This is our 1989 Ford Ranger four-wheel drive with the seldom loved and often hated 2.9 V6 motor in it. <laughs> this is the very truck Sarah learned to drive in. Her father gave it to us exactly one year ago and we've been working on the truck ever since. We haven't made any videos because we've been focused on the Mazda 3, you're welcome, and the, <laughs> and the Toyota 4Runner, you're welcome again, videos on Fixity Fix. And I've been looking for information on this particular truck, and there's millions of people that have these Rangers, and the typical wisdom when the 2.9s give out, and they all give out for various reasons that we may get into on later episodes, um, a lot of people swap them with the later 4.0s or even do a V8 swap. I've decided against everyone's better judgment to rebuild the 2.9 that came out of this truck. So behold, the empty engine compartment. This truck has what I think, and you know, please argue with me in the comments. Hey, that's what the comments are for, right? It has the inferior and less desirable automatic transmission, the A4LD uh, here, and I'm just going to leave that in there. This truck will be used off-road, and it's a little bit easier to drive off-road with an automatic transmission. We toyed with doing an electric conversion on this truck, but by the time we got all the parts and the batteries we wanted, that would have been worth uh, a lot more than we wanted to spend. <laughs> So in sourcing parts for this truck, we've been plagued, that's a very bad choice of words, with COVID-19 and supply chain issues. There are some parts ordered, like exhaust parts, that I've been waiting for more than one year on. Finding an open machine shop here in Roanoke, Virginia was a challenge. And then among those that are open, finding one that's willing to take on new work was also a challenge. Ultimately, I found a highly recommended machine shop here in town called Harmon's Machine Shop, and they were kind enough to take the engine block. That shop's pretty backlogged because they're well in demand, and it's been over three months at this point. That's given me time to do a few special things on the rest of the engine. Here is the intake for the engine, and all this is original. I've repainted the aluminum parts here, and even cleaned up the fuel rail, cleaned all the fuel injectors and pressurized and pulsed them to make sure they all worked, put out consistent volume with one another. They're the original injectors. They clean and tested just fine. More importantly, I tried my hand with porting and polishing the lower aluminum intake and the upper aluminum intake with a pneumatic grinder. And that went really well and it involved matching all the ports and removing significant material to increase airflow. I'm guessing that's gonna be worth maybe 15 to 25 horsepower, if not more. I also worked on the throttle body and smoothed out a lot of roughness where the surfaces meet all inside the throttle body. And cleaned everything up nicely. That's going to be worth, I understand, uh, 5 to 10 horsepower. While I had the heads out, I replaced all of the various temperature sensors, the fuel pressure regulator, and the idle air control valve that tends to go bad on these engines and gives everyone a headache. I've learned a lot about these engines along the way and tried a few things to get the engine running and pulling satisfactorily, including following Project Farm's methods for using seafoam to clear up the lifter tick in this engine, I had no success. Then I decided to break into the engine, and when I did, I found that it was just full of all kinds of deposits, and it's really not a surprise that the seafoam fix just wasn't enough to clean up the insides of this engine to get the lifter loosened up and filling and working hydraulically again. Additionally, and this will be fodder for another episode, I learned a thing or two 
about how oils changed in the late 80s and early 90s. Let me hear your opinions and ideas in the comments about your thoughts about why these engines tick. There's a lot of interesting theories about it. When I did compression tests and leak down tests on this block, and this is part of why I decided to pull the block and take it to a machine shop, I was getting weird readings and then sort of realized that what was happening was that the pistons were worn in an uneven shape up and down. So that it was losing compression in certain places during the stroke. I thought, okay, well the thing to do is to have this bored over and repistoned and re-ranged and that's what I'm having the machine shop work on. That brings me to the heads. These 2.9 heads are notorious for cracking if they're the earlier castings. I was lucky enough in 89 to have later castings that have the more rectangular seats for the rocker arms. The machine shop tested all these out and they were good. Once they tested them out, you can probably see in here that I poured it and polished inside the cylinder heads for the valves. There were a few lessons learned there. These will work fine. Uh, they'll get a lot more horsepower. Uh, I won't maximize it fully because I think I took too much out of the throats, but we'll see what happens. Also, gasket matched the intake ports and the exhaust ports. That took eight to 10 hours of work with the pneumatic grinder. Because of project creep and disinhibition on my part, I decided while I was at it, I didn't want to use standard rockers. These rockers, you can see, move along this rocker pedestal, and I can just feel all kinds of friction on each of these. And so I wondered about roller rockers. Roller rockers are very hard to find. It's not something you can find off the shelf at standard retailers for these engines. Uh, you can find plenty of them for Ford V8s, but not for this old 2.9 or even the 4.0s. So I splurged and paid a ridiculous amount of money to Canadian racing legend Tom ah. Morena. You can find Morena Racing's website and they're very expensive parts that Tom Morena himself builds in his machine shop in Ontario, Canada. And the special sauce here that he's machined is this rocker stud base that you replace the stock rocker arms with. I'm not going to unwrap all this and lose parts that Tom has organized, but this goes down here and replaces some of your head bolts and then your roller rockers that have bearings on the valve point and on the pivot point to vastly minimize friction in the valve train uh, bolt on with this set here that Tom has had special ordered. A rocker arm is actuated by a cam spinning inside the engine and the cam pushes the rocker arm down. The rocker arm then pushes the valve down and it's either an intake valve to allow air and fuel into the cylinder to combust or an exhaust valve gets pushed down to allow the burnt mixture out and into the manifold or the headers and out of the exhaust. So the standard rocker has a ratio. In this case, for this 2.9 engine, it's a 1 to 5 ratio. And when you add roller rockers, you can specify the ratio. A bigger ratio, like a 1 to 6 or a 1 to 7 or a 1 to 8, will give you, for example, instead of a 1 to 5 ratio, a 1 to 6 or a 1 to 7 or a 1 to 8 ratio will give you a deeper dive into the cylinder so that you have more airflow around the valve, either for bringing in a fuel-air mixture or pushing out exhaust. 1 to 8 was the largest ratio available, and that would mean a little more modification to gaskets and other things, and I think maybe a little bit 
too much on the powerful side and more on the wear side. So I went with a 1 to 7 ratio at Tom Morena's recommendation. The fulcrum is in a different place than on the stop rockers. So it's not just the bearings in the fulcrum or on the valve push part that increase your power and efficiency by decreasing friction in the drivetrain. It's also the valve getting a deeper push into the cylinder. So all in all, the roller rockers will decrease friction, increase efficiency, and also give a nice bump in power. New exhaust and intake valves and seats and then heavy duty springs because this is going to produce a lot more rotation and horsepower. There are lifters and these are notorious failure points in these 2.9 engines and the push rods that Tom supplied have oil passages in them and the lifters are some that he specially sources that push oil through them so that instead of just getting oiled through one or two passages, the heads get oiled like a standard head through push rods, have much less friction, and I understand this is worth 20 to 30 horsepower. Mr. Morena recommended these, these valve cover uh, hold down girdles, uh, and He's found that this vastly reduces the proclivity for these engines to just leak oil around the valve cover gaskets, and that was our experience in a short period of having a 2.9 running in this truck, so bought those as well. All this is on its way to the machine shop later this week. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Fixity Fix, and remember, cars aren't the only things that break, so give blood donate platelets, do something nice for somebody. That's what the comments are for, arguing, right? They're not for being supportive or showing a little gratitude to your YouTubers that come out here and try to fix things and then share the wisdom. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna edit that out. <laughs>